In this video, we are going to learn how to develop an optimization model. Well, there are four important steps in order to develop a, a successful optimization model. And I want you to follow these four steps uh, every time you are trying to put together an optimization model. The first step is to always define the decision variables. Define the controllable variables that you, know, you believe you can control uh, and then you can make a decision for okay always define them uh, verbally and also mathematically okay always use the the notation uh, that you like and also don't forget the units at the end for the decision variables okay and then the second step is to identify the object of function okay what is the thing that you would like to minimize or maximize one of them all right so don't to try to put together more than one object of function, uh, it has to be a single object of function for the for this lecture. Okay, so it's either minimize something or maximize something. That something is going to be equal to your object of function. Well, if it turns out that you cannot formulate an object of function, you will have to come back to step one and redefine your decision variables because probably you missed something out there or this, the current set of decision variables are not is not going to help you put together this object of function because you know you simply cannot uh, create a function that you like okay the third step well let's assume that you put together the object of function successfully and then third step is to identify all appropriate constraints and then uh, represent them mathematically if you fail in this step again go back to step one and then update your decision variables or add something or delete something because if you fail to represent all constraints, that means that uh, you probably um, do not have the, most probably you do not have the right set of decision variables. The fourth step is to write the object of function and constraints as a mathematical expression. So if you do mathematical expressions in all these three steps, it's going to help you a lot in this fourth step. Again, if you fail at any time, any of these steps, you have to go back to step one. Okay, let's have a quick look at this exercise. This is the Skalanka Ski Company. So um, they are a small manufacturer of two types of popular terrain snow skis, the Jordan Nail products and also the Deer Crest models. The manufacturing process consists of two principal departments, the fabrication and the finishing departments. And the fabrication department has 12 skilled workers. Okay. Every time I see a number, I try to highlight it uh, as I am reading a case study because probably I'm going to use it somewhere later on. Right? It's a quick hint, um, and, and then it's a very useful hint for you too. So each of whom works uh, seven hours per day. The finishing department has three workers who also work a seven-hour shift, and each pair of Jordan skis requires 3.5 labor hours in the fabricating department and one labor hour. In finishing the deer crash models, uh, they require four labor hours in fabricating and 1.5 labor hours in finishing. The company operates five days per week. SSC, the company, makes a net profit of 50 on the Jordan Nail model and then $65 on the deer cross model okay in anticipation of the ne next ski sales season ssc must plan its production of these two models because of the popularity of its production and limited production capacity its products are in high demand and ssc can sell all it can produce each season the company anticipates selling at least twice as many deer cross models as jordan nail models the company wants to determine how many of each model should be produced on a daily basis to maximize the net profit. Okay, so what I just read can be um, can be representing a, a very similar problem in a very different company, right? So basically, how are you going to put together the best production portfolio for this company so that this company can maximize their profit? Well, to me. Uh, this is just a simple linear programming model. Well, how do we overcome this? So how do we formulate this so that we can put together the best solution for this manager? Okay, well, here is your roadmap. 
So first thing first, you have to define the decision variables. How do we do that? Well, what are the things that you can control? Ask yourself these questions. What are the things that you can make a decision for? So in this example, I believe we can make a decision for uh, the number of journal products that we can produce daily and the number of deer class models that we can produce daily, okay? Um, that's our step one, okay? We have two decision variables, basically, that con well, do those control the number of uh, uh, products that we produce for the two skis. And the second step, we have to identify the object of function. So if you look at the, the text at the very end, it says that the company wants to determine how many of each model should be produced on daily basis to maximize the net profit. Well, from makes a net, uh, the, the company makes a profit of fifty dollars on the Jordan model, right, and sixty five dollars on the Deer Class model. So this is these are the values that I need to represent my objective function, which is the net profit. So I define my uh, decision variables: Jordan and Deer Class. Those are the number of Jordan products produced daily and the number of Deer Class products pro produced daily. So it is just 50 times this Jordan plus 65 times Deer Class is going to give me the total net profit. Okay. I believe I got my decision variables correct so that you no know, you know I, I, I was able to represent my total net profit. As you can see, the third step is to identify all appropriate constraints. So let's reread the text. Uh, so as you can see, um, we have two departments, right? We highlighted that already. And then the fabrication department has 12 skilled workers, each of whom works seven hours per day. The finishing department has three workers who also work a seven hour shift. So it says that each pair of journal skis requires 3.5 labor hours in the fabricating department and one labor hour in finishing department. So we do have labor hour restriction in each of these departments. How do we control that? So um, uh, we have to make sure that the total labor used must be less than or equal to the amount of labor available so in each department. So for the fabrication department, we do have 84 hours available because you know um, it, the, each shift is going to consist each daily shift is uh, consists of seven hours of work and then we have 12 skilled workers in this department so seven times 12 is going to make uh, 84 hours and we know that each journal product is going to consume 3.5 um, R in the fabrication department and then the aircraft model is going to consume four hours in the fabrication department. So this left hand side is going to give me total amount required in fabrication. Okay, And then we just add a constraint that says this has to be less than or equal to 84. Similarly, for the finishing department, it is seven hours of work, and then we have three skilled laborers, so we have 21 hours available. And I can write this left hand side that says, okay, this is the total amount required in finishing department. At the very end of the text, it says that the company anticipates selling at least twice as many deer class models as your nail models. So what I can say here is that you know, I can represent this constraint because I do have a decision variable on journal and deer crest. I say that, well, deer crest two is greater than or equal to two times journal. That's what this constraint says. So the, this is the total uh, two times the the number of uh, journal skis that I produce right daily. So I have to make sure that the number of deer class models is greater than or equal to that number. Finally, we want to make sure that you know these decision variables are greater than or equal to zero because otherwise it wouldn't make sense, right? If deer class model, well, let's assume that deer class is equal to minus five. It, it doesn't mean anything. So it's just a waste of time for our computational power and for our brain power. All right, so this is the first formulation, uh, first linear optimization model that you put together.